I'm James Hooper, and I'm the creator of Fred and Nuevo. One of the main performance things is, and it's something that we've really worked on, is keeping them drivey and loose. We're really working on the surfboard style turns. So we've got, we're trying to get the full rail turns and the really snappy under the lip top turns. We were using smaller boards than what we are now. So what we're doing now with sort of with the bottom shapes and the rails, the way we've got them working, we can like for a one board solution, you'd have a bigger board than you normally would. So you, you're okay in the lighter winds, but then when the wind picks up or the swell picks up, you could, you've still got that control. You're not going to be out of control and fly around like you used to on the older style boards. Yeah, well that's where you get the, um, for going for the bigger all-round board, is that you've, you've still got that light wind performance. So where maybe you would have had to have two, two boards for those conditions, you can get away with one now. The shapes, I think we've just got, there's a few differences that we do and that we can put into it and we can sort of tailor it to fit people and how they sail a bit more. Um, they're not restricted to one board that they can buy. They can get minor differences made. One thing that we've got with these, with the Nuevos now, is with the freestyle moves and the, and the wave moves is we've managed to get these boards so you can do a full, like a really solid rail turn off the top. Or you've also got the option you can break the fins out and do a sliding move like the Taka. Um, this is, and this is a, we've done a lot of work through the bottom shapes of the boards and the rails as to how they drive and grip in the waves. For me it just feels like you're on a surfboard again. You know, it's got that, that flat deck and that, that sort of rocker that, that you try to find the sweet spot, you, you position the board, you move up and down it until, until you get the thing to carve and then the rail engages and it turns like a surfboard. It's not, it's not really pivotal like a lot, of, a lot of windsurf boards and doesn't really turn off the fins at all. It's all just about um, yeah, getting, getting that board in the right position and it sort of automatically does a big rail gouge. So it's quite different to a lot of boards. I've had a lot of windsurfers since I've been windsurfing, but it doesn't even compare to the number of surfboards I've had in my life. Um, so what I'm looking for in a board is a surfboard, a surfboard for waves. So when I look at all the stuff with all the dome decks and the hard rails and stuff, it's just absolutely foreign to me. It's not what I've, I've grown up looking at surfboards, which are flat, always they have to have a flat deck and they have to have round rails and um, anything else is just, yeah, it's not, it's not wave riding. Yeah, well that's part of the, part of the reason why it's good to do. It's, I mean, when I started doing it, it was, if I made a board for myself and I liked it, and then as it went on, I started making guide boards for other guys, then they start getting happy with it, and then it's, yeah, so it just, the more you do and the more you get out there, it's just, keeps getting better. It's when you find out what they want and you um, and you work it all out and then when you get it and you can see them using it and they're really liking it and you can see that sailing improve, it's really good. A sense of satisfaction.
I've always liked the way surfboards work. You, know, you see a thruster board or a, a surfboard 20 and the fins are always right on, right next to the rail. They're nowhere near the center of the board. A lot of the twin fin sailboards I was looking at, the, um, the fins were quite close to the center of the board and I was just, I don't know, it didn't really make sense to me. So I tried putting them out, we've tried putting them out really far and it, it works really well. It gives the, um, we've also got a bit of cant on the fins as well. So, and that, which I think allows you to just get, engage the fin and the rail more when you're turning. And that's what I think we've achieved with these boards is that we've, we've really got that surfboard feel like you don't, to make small adjustments, you don't need to lean right over the top of the board. You can just, with your back foot and just slight weight changes, you can really get the boards to make good directional changes. So if I'd just bought a Nuevo and just pulled it straight out of the bag and getting it set up with the straps and everything, the mast track for most conditions would put in the center of the track. There's actually a recommended uh, marker on the board. And foot straps I would put in the middle holes of the boards. And the fins, the majority of time you would have them to the front of the box to, so that's pretty much directly under your feet but if you're going to be in faster more down the line type waves it it can be a bit grippier to have them put it further back in the box uh, if you were to put the foot straps further back on the board you'll get a it'll be a looser type turn it'll you know, it puts your weight further to back to the back of the board so the tail will be able to sink sink down a bit more and have a more pivoty type turn. If you have your foot straps forward more, you're gonna, it'll stiffen it up a bit, but it'll be a more drivey turn. You'll be able to get more over the top of the board. Yeah, compared to the, a lot of other sailboards, I think you find the Nuevos are a lot looser. It's a, it's a different style bottom turn that you're doing maybe, but the top turns on these boards is, I think it's some of the best you'll find, they're just super tight top turns and they really go, it's easy to get these boards vertical and really finish your turn. Um, I've known Ben for a long time who's had some involvement with starboard and we've travelled around windsurfing together quite a lot. Um, I think it was a few years ago we were in Bali in Indonesia, we met up with Sven and some of the other guys in Chiesda and I think yeah I think those guys kind of like the look of the boards and um, got to know them a bit and then we just kind of kept in contact and eventually ended up. But when he really got into it was it must have been about four years ago three or four years ago and he'd built a few and they were they were pretty standard looking boards for the day you know they were sort of same sort of length as everything else and basically he was just trying to build an alternative to the same boards that everyone else was was sailing so they weren't really anything different and then i think he was building one and i think it all went wrong and a bit much pressure in the in the um, in the vacuum bagging process, it sucked sucked all the board in, and he pretty much had a write off on his hands. So uh, I think he, um, he he tried to tried to get some some use out of it. So he cut the front off, he cut the tail off. He had this ugly abortion looking board. Put a couple of fins in the back of it, and um, he went around sailed around on it for a couple of days, and came back saying it was great. It was better than the proper ones. And then one day I was coming down here actually, and he forced it in the back of my truck. And I, um, I came down with this thing and had pretty much zero intention of even trying it because it looked ugly. And went out, standard for Margaret River, had a shit sail. Um, yeah, couldn't get anything right, kept falling off. So I thought, oh, can't get any worse, I might as well take that abortion board out for a sail. And I went out, I was like, oh, I could actually do it you know it's 
just a completely different style of board. It felt more like a surfboard. And yeah, I was I was amazed. It looked ugly, but it it went pretty sweet. Yeah, with the with the nude boards, what we've found is the conditions we're sailing in are normally fairly small waves, you're looking at head high to bit bit more than that and it's usually side shore at best maybe it's a touch onshore so what you're looking for all the time is is loads of drive and um, we found w with these nude boards we can actually ride a bigger board than we used to so we're holding more volume because they turn they're so much looser than the old big boards we used to ride so we, we gain the drive from having the, the volume and the extra width and you've still got plenty of looseness like the thing will still turn on its own length basically it's pretty a pretty small radius turns that the boards do the biggest one you've tried the biggest the biggest one i had a good go on was about 110 liters that was one of the guys had that i couldn't believe how usable that was you know I, I used to sell, my favourite board used to be the the old Evo 70, it was like a, um, yeah, the old single fin version way back in the day, that thing was a sweet board, and that, so that was a 70, and now I'm more than happy to be riding a 90, and if I could justify having another board, then yeah, like a 110 or even bigger would it just gives you so much drive so in those small waves and those lighter winds it just enables you to hold speed all the way through the turn so you've got a, you've got something to use at the top of the wave that's that's the sailing that we get most of the time in in perth and and north of perth it's not it's not margaret river perfection that we're sailing every day yeah and we did a i went over to tenerife last year and caught up with the starboard guys and had a few of their guys test out some of my boards and that seemed to go quite well and then got the chance to go back to Thailand and did uh, I think we did four prototypes there and that was pretty good getting to check out the factory and see how that all worked and um, yeah, and then we did a few more prototypes back over in my factory in Australia and got the plugs done and now they're in production, so it's been a good process.